Alright guys, so I didn't know what to do with this footage because the audio is messed up, but... Oh, holy shit, I'm out of breath. Um, yeah, uh, they're changing crowd cheese you, which actually, this is terrible footage for this example, but let's be realistic here. To get one example of the crowd cheese you, short of my screenshots, which are actually pretty funny, I think I'll upload, or I'll put one at the end of this, um, as long as I don't forget, uh, to watch a, a game of how the crowd cheese you works is the most boring, depressing thing in the world, and everyone hates it. The issue I have with the crowd cheese you buff, or the way they're changing it, hold on, let me think about this for a second, okay. Whatever it is. Now it gives you like a thousand percent increased damage and you take like 90% reduced damage so you can't spell reflect and instantly kill someone. Uh, the new change is going to reduce healing by 1% or whatever it is from whatever it is. The point that it's past 10 minutes every 10 seconds you lose 1% healing I believe is how it works. Um, so after whatever it is a 20 minute game. That was the description they gave. I don't know if that math's out right but it's something like that. Go to MMO Champion. It has on the front page. You lose healing over time. Now, this may not end up playing out like my worries about it, but here's the way I see it when I read that. If all healing suddenly gets turned off, obviously this is an extreme example because people will die at 99% healing just as easily as they will at 100. It's pretty impossible to not get a kill with that. But in some weird world, if it instantly turns on, who's going to win? If I had to pick every class right now, my list of who would win would theoretically go like starting probably mage just because they have the best kiting and they can simply burst the best. But with no healing, they might die. But ignoring that, I'll just go with melee because that's what I play. I play like all melee, and most of you can probably understand this. The first winner would be warrior. Not going off of damage, although I'm pretty sure their sustained damage is really goddamn high that could potentially put them over the top. But I would start off with Warriors as number one, because they have 25% passive damage reduction, completely ignoring what armor they're wearing. My second would then go to Death Knights, who have Blood Presence, which gives them extra HP, which I suppose is slightly diminished. If you have half health and you turn to Blood Presence, you only gain half of 10% of your HP, so it'll probably be like 20k as opposed to 40k or whatever it is. 10% reduced damage, and then a shit ton of armor. The third in line, however you want to look at it, the way I see it is just those classes are getting further buffed because they don't actually take damage. Um, obviously, there are some trade-offs. For example, uh, I'm trying to think of a class with a major healing cooldown. Okay, if you were to look at Death's Pact for a Death Knight, restores whatever percent of health it is for sacrificing your pet, it's theoretically not a bad option. Um... That becomes a useless defensive cooldown with the buffs all the way up there, while Touch of Karma will pretty much always do whatever it needs to do. It'll shield me and I won't die. That's pretty much the whole point of taking that ability. Um, so, obviously, there's going to be some class imbalances between the two, obviously. If all healing suddenly turns off and a monk has Touch of Karma up, it will be better than Death's Pact or Enrage Regeneration, although that's not really a cooldown anymore. I'm just giving examples here. Calm down. Vampiric Touch. Embrace, whatever it is. Healing Stream Totem, although that's not really cool. Down. Healing Tide Totem. There's one. That's a good one. So, I feel like it's already, like, they put it in a crappy position because people will play 100% for the timeout. I do it all the time. Um, I'm usually relatively nice about it, meaning I will legitimately go for the kill. I will not go, oh, well, I went for a kill. I'm not going to use anything anymore till I live. Or I'm just going to peel all game. I usually do that starting at around 4 minutes when you've been gain return. Like, my my level of gainness pretty much goes, if you peel me when I'm bursting your healer, instead of just trading healers if we both have defensive or offensive cooldowns, like if I'm fighting a warrior, if he peels me when he still has recklessness up, when I have bruise up, I'm going to stop him every time he goes on my healer. That's just sort of how they decide to set the pace. If he wants to play who's got the better healer game, which is still technically unfair because I think in the most part monks have the highest burst in the game, so it's sort of a rigged example, but I also have some of the best peels in the game, which is gods and twos, we're crappy in threes, that's how monks work. Um, it just sort of is, you end up playing around it depending on what team you fight. You fight different teams, you play it a little bit differently, play a little bit nicer, play a little bit beaner. I don't think I've ever burst within the first Tigers I brew and then said fuck it. I've always gone for a second kill or a third kill or a fourth kill depending on how many stacks I get. So... 
people do play around it and it's really annoying to fight, but I don't feel like the next change is going to help at all. I would have much rather seen damage go up as opposed to healing go down. That way, I mean, that has its equal option. For example, if I know I can 100 to 0 any healer with 30%, and let's say a rogue knows he can 100 to 0 a healer with 40%, I'm going to do it faster. I'll win every game. In some perfect world. So it that also leaves out mistakes, but I still feel like it's better than innately pushing the holy shit, these classes are a mortal thing, further. Um, I just feel like defensive stance gets far too much benefit and things like that when, like, priests have been nerfed off it. And I just, I don't like the setup of it, but I will say this. While I think it has some major issues, it's better than the crowd chooses you in its current state. Although, crowd chooses you in full gear might be a little bit different than now. For example, I have very few timeouts playing my monk, for real. And I do mean for real, like, if I'm playing with save or holy pee or something where it's like, yo, we're gonna win. If you beat us, you're pretty fucking good. Or you're just running something that counters us, but not very many things counter that. Um, to where I haven't had anywhere near as many timeouts if I play my comps. Obviously, that doesn't go for everyone. If you're queuing, I'm trying to think of something crappy here. Um, what doesn't go well together? Yeah, it's in some DPS worlds, like if you're playing, if you're playing Mage Priest, uh, Death Knight Paladin or something is not going to have any fun whatsoever. You have no chance whatsoever, and if the Mage wants to play for timeout, he can. If he wants to kill your Paladin in the opener, he also can. I feel like it should just be closer to that, to where in full gear, I don't think I'll have any trouble killing anyone. Um, it will take probably perfect setup and a crit, but I feel like that will always kill them. Um... I don't know. There's always going to be an issue, though. So, I'm kind of bitching for no reason, but I really feel like it's just going to make Warriors stronger. Anyway, thanks for watching.